All right, my brother, here we are for episode 61 of By the Numbers. What have we got tonight? Man, we got five movies that I'm not 100% sure about. We got Imaginary. We got The Marsh King's Daughter. We got some Fight Club movie. It's escaping my memory. Uh, Rumble Through the Dark. Rumble, Rumble Through the Dark. We got Anyone But You and Night Shift. And Those Night Shift. Movies. All right. Well, like Night Shift. All right. Night shift. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. He's Rich. I'm Dave. We're the faces for radio. Let's get going. 5432 show. What's up, everybody? Thank you for joining us as the Faces for Radio podcast presents By the Numbers, where we take new releases, theater, streaming, or physical release. We watch them, we review them, we'll let you know our thoughts. I am your host, David, and my co-host is... Rich, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, brother. How you doing? No, okay, i am been fighting a headache all day. Actually, I've been fighting a headache the last three days, but mm. hey, man, it's showtime. Yeah, it is. It's time to, time to buckle down to it. I had a migraine... I had migraine last Saturday for basically um, <clears throat> we had to move spirits with spirits last week, moved it from Friday to Saturday. And now we're moving to Monday starting yeah. on the 25th. I mean, yeah, 25th of this month. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, but I had a, my, I, I was ready Friday, but we couldn't do it Friday. So, but all day Saturday I had a migraine and I was like, you know what? Just push. The show must go on. We got to do it. We can't let it go another week because we had already pushed it a week because of my family issues. Um, <clears throat> but do you know? Okay, so the we pick these kind of at random. We we mm -hmm. go in cold. We just go. Okay, what's coming out new? Let's put. You know, we kind of have an idea of the genre. We put them in. We schedule them out. We never know if the movies are really going to be good or not. Yeah. Um, I do have to say this this was not a good week. It was not a good week. I mean, I there was one movie I really, really, really liked. And I still I, want to add this movie to my collection. I just haven't got to the store to buy it yet. But we'll talk about <clears> that before we get to that movie. That, that's interesting. I mean, I I liked I liked three of these, but I didn't really, really like any of them. I liked two. Um, I, I was like, okay. Um, and I mean, I was, I, I put, I'd put two above the other ones, but there's a third one where like, you yeah, okay. I'd watch that again. Um, if you know, you put a gun to my head or something, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, there were two movies here that were just, uh, <clears throat> they were, they were yeah. pretty disappointing. Um, let's go into the chat and see who's here. Caveman hey, joined us. He came hey. in about an hour early. Well, um, Adrian, if you're still here, I am sorry. Um, I was going to do an Instagram live with him um, just to chat with him. But, man, I had a headache the last couple of days. So I apologize for that guy. So I hope you can accept my apology for not doing it. Oh, man. Um, well, you did come in day of. So, Caveman, you get the cookie, my brother. Oh, man, those look good. Cookies for you. Um, what's Robert's up, Robert? here. Rob, what's up, brother? Um, Rob, my friends, has just recently signed to join us on By the Numbers for April 24th. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting Rob on the show, pushing him through the movies. And <laughs> we're, we're thinking about it or tossing this around. But Corey, our good buddy Wilkie, also wanted to join us for the 24th. 
So it might be a fatal four way. It might be a foursome. Yeah. It might, it might be a foursome. We might do a wife swap. Rob, if you're interested <laughs> in doing a four way, <laughs> then, um, then, you know, give me a faux show because I know that's your thing. Yeah. Uh, and let us know if you're if you're down for that because Corey also wanted to do that day, but you came first. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean that sexually. Uh, <laughs> they or maybe I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Sure. Um, what's up, Holland? Good to see you, brother. Uh, I hope you're doing good. Um, gun to your head. I guess you like all of them. Gun to my head, I'll have to watch them. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> but at Robert loves cookies, four way, damn. And then faux show. Okay, so he's down. He's down for a four way, you guys. So I I messaged Corey and told him I'd talk to you. Um, so if if Corey's down for this, we're gonna do a four way on April twenty fourth. It's gonna be me, Rich, Rob, and Corey. Um, in a lot of April twenty fourth. That's gonna be a great show, and <clears throat> um, I'm looking forward to that. So that means the average will be from four of us. Yeah. Um, not just three, because we've only had three. We've had one guest on the show, but never two at a time. So um, I think we can handle it. I think our I imaginations, I think we can handle it. Um, got this. We got this. Um, speaking what's up, of Del? Del, what's up, Dell? Speaking of people Thanks that got this, here, Del. Del recently messaged us, oh. and I, I was going to talk to you about that too, Rich, because Dell's looking to be on by the numbers in the summer hell yeah and have us together for a movie swap oh i'm down i I, I I was like i know i know i'm speaking for rich say dude i'm totally in i've got yeah, i i don't talk to dell a whole lot yeah but i have so much respect for dell and what he yeah. does over on his channel i absolutely love dell so anytime he wants to do something with us i'm down yeah so, dell dell's one of my favorite people i have too i've known him longer than anybody yeah. in the in the movie community because Dell and I have been friends since way back on Twitter. Yeah. Um in 2011 2012. So I I will yeah. I yeah. I'll I'll follow Dell into the fire cuz he's I, I he's one of my best friends on here. And the thing about Dell is he comes across just as a stand up guy. You yeah. know, he has character. Honest. Which, yeah. Honorable That's unlike really us. Like but Yeah. <laughs> um Totally, he's not a, he's not I don't know why he's asking us to do this, but yeah, totally, you know, totally stand up guy, absolutely, you know, Family straight man. up. Um, he tells it like it is, no matter yeah. what. Um, whether it, whether it upsets you or not, he's gonna give you an honest answer, and I yeah. respect that. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of respect. And for that. our foursome will be Rich, myself, Rob, and Corey. So, <clears throat> uh, I think that's gonna be an awesome foursome. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, hey, love it, love it. Um, Rob says, I'm good with that, no matter no mode to marrier. All right. <laughs> um, thanks, guys. We'll lock it down. Awesome. Yeah. That's a lot of man meat for the 24th. That's right. I don't have a lot of man meat, so we're good. <laughs> we're we're good. So yeah, it'll it'll be three and a half men. Yeah, um, like when I drop my pants, my girlfriend laughs. She's like, Really? Ha <laughs> ha! Here's some money. Um, oh, how cute! Yeah, I've got enough. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, that's gonna be that's gonna yeah. be awesome. Um, what are some of the what are some of the movies we have for that that show? Just a teaser. Let me, okay, let me just the twenty fourth. Let me yeah. pull that up. Sorry, my list. I didn't. Even, I don't even have our this week's numbers pulled up. I got a movie. Kinda, Wait, I got it. Oh, I got Rebel it. Moon Part Two, Civil War, Night Swim, Out of Darkness, and Zone of Interest. Right? Yeah. Yep. So, um, I'm down for that. Um, we'll keep you posted as that comes about. <clears throat> yeah. But that looks good, and it's the day before my son's birthday. Awesome. Um, son's plural, birthday singular. My sons are both born on the same day. Damn. Um, April, April 25th. They're exactly a year apart. Known as you know twins. You know um, what you and your wife like to do at a certain time of year. Yeah, where does that pick a day? <laughs> All right, August 30th. Let's go. Okay. Um, so <laughs> the 
that we are. That's right. And speaking of which, there's my son. Awesome. Uh, that's my that's my oldest, Eric. What's up, my son? I love you. Don't go telling everyone. Too bad. I I <laughs> write about this shit. Um. But let's see who else. Okay. Yeah. Everybody's saying hey to everybody. Love it. Dell is the man. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. I love it. <clears throat> All right. So, of these five eh, movies, which one did you think got a lower score? I'm going to go with Night Shit. Night Shit. Um, that's a pretty safe bet. So, as you guys know, we take we take the five movies, we watch them, we score them, we take the average score and rank them from lowest to highest. And <clears throat> Night Shift, or Night Shit, takes our lowest score of the week. Yeah. This was uh, yeah, this was on video on demand. Ran it anywhere you rent movies digitally. Um, yeah, you can you can rent it on Prime or Voodoo or anything like that. It's like yeah, five ninety nine. Yeah, but don't. Uh, but don't save your money. This is, save your money. This is yeah. This eh. <clears throat> there this was felt like a Shutter movie. That this okay. Um, yeah, I could see that. This felt like a Shutter movie. This there was a point that I liked, and was it the twist? <clears throat> Yeah, me too. I I, I, perked, I, agree I perked up with the twist. I was I was bored. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, and I I usually don't get bored with a horror movie. You give me enough gore, you give me enough, you know, creepy stuff, I can stay interested. But if you bore me with a horror movie, <clears throat> that's yeah. really hard to do. And but then once the twist happens, which it's it's like like maybe right in the middle of the movie, maybe a little bit after that. I think about three fourths of the way. I thought, yeah, there's a, there's a twist about two thirds of the way in where I was like, Oh, okay. That's, yeah. that's kind of a cool thing. Um, and then it got better. It did, but then it ended and yeah. I was happy that it was over, but it was like, I, I, the ending was flat. It was like, yeah, it made no sense. It was like I, all of a sudden this thing was built back up and all was nice and shiny and, yeah. Well, it was it was basically it looked exactly like the um his image of it, the, yeah. the old manager of the hotel. Yeah. And he was like, this is how I'm picturing it. And this I want to franchise it. She basically just did that. Yeah. Um and took over the hotel. And I was like I kind of expected that. Um was this movie related to Day Shift with Jamie Foxx? No. <laughs> no. No. If it was, it'd be it great. Would have been, <laughs> would have been a lot better. How dare they sully a terrific movie by the same name? Henry Winkler and Michael Keaton are going to roll over in bed. Mm. I've never seen that one with Michael Keaton. I have seen Night Shift with Michael Keaton and Henry Winkler. That was good. It's funny. You know, the one thing about Guy is he always has these pools that movies I've never heard of. Yeah. And like when he did his high five, like I had never seen any of those movies, which was kind of cool. That's just one thing about Guy I like. Yeah. He has a, a great reference to movies that he are has, yeah he has a good yeah he's a good um um catalog yeah of titles mm -hmm. in his head he's like oh this reminds me of this movie and i'm like dude <clears throat> i'm pretty good at that guy is really good at that. no you're not that's why i have you on the show it makes me look smart <laughs> um but yeah this uh, this movie I, I saw some potential here. Yeah. I mean, I liked the trailer. I, I the, yeah, the trailer kind of interested me. Yeah. We both did, gave a six to the trailer. Yeah. Um, as as far as highlights go, talking about the highlights, um, and that was your highest. I actually gave a seven to the story because, like I said, with that twist, the story perked up for me. I had the story at a three, and, that's, and I bumped it up to a five because – because I, I scored the story maybe halfway – not even halfway through. I was like, this shit sucks. Three. Yeah. And then the yeah, twist I, came. I was like, "Oh, okay. I'm gonna give it a little higher." Yeah, it's it's funny because I, I basically I start everything at a five, at the beginning of the movie, and then when I hit I hit something and I go, "I didn't like that." I knock it down a point, oh. and then and then oh, I like that. I bring it up a point. So that so that's kind of how I score it when I go through the movie. <clears throat> so like you know visuals and sound, a music you know. Something catches my ear with the sound. I'll yeah. put a point to it, but I start everything at a five. Um, cast is straight based on recognition, which <clears throat> there's you know a couple of TV actors I recognized. Yeah, but really you know nobody. 
yeah in this movie um and i i like that with horror movies I, it was written i, we and I think that. the i think the acting here was awful oh man it was um, <laughs> it so was. we both yeah we both gave a four to the acting we both gave a six to the trailer but yeah seven for the story was my big thing and i did give a five for the subgenre where you gave it a four yeah but i, I don't recommend this you guys especially if you're gonna pay real money for yeah. it no don't I read it and it sucked balls. Don't don't oh. do it. I I regret him renting this, but this was his choice. So this was my pick. Yeah, he picked it. Um, it, it's it's not the worst thing thing I've seen this year, but it's no. it's not good. It's I think definitely the worst thing we're probably going to see is the color purple next week. <clears throat> uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, I, I think the color purple is probably a good movie, but I my stomach churns every time I I know. I know I have to watch this for next week, and I'm like I'm dreading it. Me too. Like I told you before we started the show, I was going to yeah. start it this weekend and I was like, nah, I nah, don't want to. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Um, all right. Go watch let's the go to, yeah. Go watch the Expendables. Um, yeah. Give it a, give it another two star rating. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. They gave you such shit. They did. The they so did. <laughs> um, Alex, Alex calls you out for that, bro. He did. <laughs> he sees he your letterbox. Did. How dare you give this two stars? <laughs> oh, it's, it's the so best funny. one of the series. He, and you're like, I hear his sucks. voice in the text. When yeah, he, I can hear him. Yeah, I can yeah. hear Alex speaking. I hear Alex's yeah. voice. Yeah. I hear Alex's voice. Um, <laughs> oh, man. So funny. <laughs> All right, let's go to our final scores on Night Shit Shift. Coming in fifth place, you guys. Not recommended. IMDb, and I don't understand the Rotten Tomato scores. Yeah. IMDb is giving this a 5.2. Rotten Tomatoes critic score, 29%. Audience score, 92%. They had to be high. Um, they Or they were all connected to the movie. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'm going to see how many, just because I, I didn't actually check the number on it. Oh, it's, just, it's like 50 plus ratings. So, yeah, it was just people on the cast. And, it had to be. <laughs> stuff like no that, way somebody thought this movie was good but i don't think there's any way this movie was good it just no. um i i like the asian girl but i remember her from the brother's son which is yeah. a series on netflix right now that i love i loved brother's son um found out that they're not getting a season two so i'm disappointed about that but it was really the cool. michelle yao yeah the michelle yeah, yao one. quick yeah but it was good i really liked it <clears throat> i never watched it um Anyway, so Rich, you gave it a 45. I gave it a 47. Our total average score, 46. And that one goes right yeah. in the toilet. Yeah. Um, sad. This one looked interesting. It did. It, the yeah. trailer looks interesting. The trailer looked interesting. I, I Yeah, mm -hmm. we gave the trailer a six. We were like, okay, yeah, I'd be interested in watching that. Um, and it was really like, like all of a sudden – the, the the like the the meat of the story comes out mm -hmm. and that's about halfway through the movie and then the twist happens like almost right after that yeah um to where you're i'm like okay who wrote this <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i don't i don't recommend it you know i mean but dell if you could find it for free check it yeah. out yeah if yourself, it hits somewhere I'd, free i'd hate for you to have to pay for this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but but if it if it shows up for free on like Peacock or or Shutter oh. or something, then yeah, maybe maybe check it out. But no, this this is at best a meh, but it's more like eh. yeah. so I, yeah, I don't recommend it. All right, pull up my things again. My phone closed. I think the next one is going to be Rumble Through the Dark. <laughs> it. Oh, hang on a second. Uh oh, I think I messed something up. <clears throat> did, did you? Did any of you guys happen to watch any of these five movies? If so, just let us know what you thought of the any of them that you've seen. Uh -huh. Did you guys go see Imaginary in the theater? Have did you go guys go see anyone but you in the theater when it was in theater? The Marsh King's Daughter. <sighs> I have to redo this. Yeah, sometimes it's a gamble when I just look at the I will say like 90% of the time I just throw movies in and hope for the best and 
Um, is that you? Yeah, that was me. Was that not been my, I'm I'm, Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm adding something to the thing. I had to. Oh, I had okay. to redo the card for one of the movies. <clears throat> you said yeah, bad. I, you they're good. both still alive, so they <laughs> so they could not roll over in their grave. Okay. I knew, I knew Keaton was alive. I was not a hundred percent sure of Winkler, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I watched Marsh King's daughter. Good. I, Did I'm you like it? it? We're definitely going to talk about that. Um, do you have a dog? It's the outside dog. Somebody. Oh, okay. Dog. I'm like, since when do you get a dog? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our number four movie is not Rumble in the Rumble Through the Dark. Imaginary it is imaginary coming oh, in number terrible. four. Um, I did not like this. Uh, this, I had such high hopes for this. I, I, I saw the trailer and I was like, dude, I, I, I'm excited. I want to see this. I'm thinking, okay, where you know, if is the Ryan Reynolds one, yeah, and, you know, everybody's getting that confused. If the Ryan Reynolds one comes out in May, I believe, mm -hmm. and it's more of a more Family of a fluffy, company. like a Monsters Inc. version mm -hmm. of of what we're talking about. Imaginary is more is supposed to be more of a horror movie, but it did not turn out that way for me. I I did not find it scary at all. Yeah. Uh, I found it maybe two steps above Goosebumps. Uh, yeah, it was. It felt very, it felt like. Like Nickelodeon or yeah. um, like I said, Goosebumps. It felt like yeah. a Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon trying to do a Halloween movie. Yeah, um, this was not good. I'm I glad I don't have to pay for my theater. But it was What's up, up Terry? Thanks for joining good us. To see you, brother. I haven't seen you in forever. Yeah, we appreciate you, man. Uh, Rich's dogs are really barking. That's it's right. just some dog outside. Yeah. Question for Caveman: Are Keaton and Winkler rolling over in the same bed? Ooh, <laughs> Batman in the Fonz. I'm, I'm gonna do my Fonz and go. Hey. <laughs> no, but this movie. I'm normally I don't have to pay for a movie anymore because my daughter is a manager at the theater. I was so glad I didn't have to pay for this, or I'd have been pissed. Yeah, no, I mean I have I have the unlimited thing, and we did it on a Tuesday, so it was five dollars for my wife's ticket. I still think we overpaid. Mm -hmm. Um. Because I had to pay for the popcorn and stuff, and that was Even way more. When you got to the, you saw the creature at towards the end. It looked so bad. I was like, really? They had to make it dark so you couldn't see it. Yeah, I was like, man. Um, what's up, Jeff? It's good what's to see up, you, brother. Man? Hope you're doing good. Um, but yeah, no, this was disappointing. Yeah. Um. It, it, it was boring too. Yeah, no, I, it was, my mind it was slow. It was dark. Um, acting I didn't wasn't very good. The acting wasn't very good. Um, the synopsis on this one reads: A woman returns to her childhood home to discover that the imaginary friend she left behind is very real and unhappy that she abandoned him. <clears throat> there again, there's a little twist in here though that mm. I like. And it had to do with the bear. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There was a little twist that had to do with the bear. I was like, oh, okay. That's kind of cool. That perks me up a little bit. That's but it. it. It just got one nipple hard. It didn't get anything it, else. It hard. did. Yeah. I, yeah. It was like, yeah. I was like, oh, that was, it was just that one. I, I mean, yeah. I, <clears throat> so I was disappointed. It, I didn't, this was not as bad as Night Shift. Oh, no. But I didn't think it was worth seeing in the theater. Mm -mm. Um, you don't waste your money if you have, if you're thinking about going to go see the theater. Wait till it hits streaming somewhere. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not it's not saying much here. My my wife does not like to watch horror movies. She basically, she was on her phone the whole time. <laughs> we were we were by ourselves in the theater. Yeah. So so that just you know I now yeah. wait for this to hit streaming if you want to check it. I yeah. I thought it, this is from the makers of Five Guys at Freddy's or whatever. Um, I thought oh, Five Nights at Freddy's was better than this. I, I would agree with you, and I didn't even like that movie either. Yeah. Um, I 100 percent agree with that. I didn't realize it's the same people. I, I'm pretty sure it is. I, I'm yeah, I didn't realize that. And I was like, I, I saw that and from the beginning. It's like from the makers of Five Guys at Freddy's or from the producer of Five Guys at Freddy's. Something but like now that. I see it. I see yeah. it. I totally see it. It totally makes sense now, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the only person I do recognize in here is Tom Payne. 
Mm-hmm. And Tom Payne, of course, is Jesus from the Walking Dead series. Mm-hmm. Um, so I liked seeing him in it, but I, I didn't get anything from him. It was like he phoned that in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even Dell's like Five Nights at Freddy's is crap. Yeah. Like, I, I, I agree. Yeah. Um, but I liked it better than this. <laughs> yeah. I was more entertained with that. That's I couldn't thing. imagine ever seeing this anyway. See, K-Man, yeah, K-Man. I was gonna, I was gonna say this movie. I think you could watch. <laughs> <laughs> I think my kids could watch this. One. I, I, you know, I wouldn't take Piper to see this. It's too dark for her. She wouldn't be. I mean, visibly dark. Um, because she would think it was night night time, and she she wouldn't go for that at all. Um, but. Yeah, I was disappointed in here. Um, this is probably not going to be a buy when it comes out. Oh no, I don't. I don't think I'd watch this again. I wouldn't. Um, no, no let's doubt. go to our highlights on it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you're, you're again six for the trailer. Yeah, the trailer I, I, looks good. It, it did. I was um, to see it. And then you gave like fives to the ending and the story. Yeah. And the sound, otherwise it's fours and threes and a two for the cast. I I went seven for the trailer. I went seven for the visuals. There were a couple things that I really liked. Um, and then it's at three for the genre, uh, a four for direction. We were both at I gave a five to the acting, I gave a five to the cast. Um, but it was it, at, like again, at best, a myth. It was not, um, bring that. Do you you have the box office for this? I can get it. Yeah, I'm just curious what it did compared to Kung Fu Panda, Dune. Oh, um, Um, so with a budget of 13 million, it it grossed 24 24 million, just a little bit over 24 million in the box office on on its opening weekend. Opening opening weekend was ten million, nine point nine. Oh, so it's been out two weeks. Okay, it's been out two weeks. It's it's made twenty four million. Okay, I bet this would probably get a sequel. I almost bet. I you know Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey just got a sequel. So <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, I bet with it making almost its double its budget, I bet um, this gets a sequel. <laughs> Just it only cost thirteen million dollars to make. Yeah, I mean it's got a pretty low, a pretty low budget, and yeah. I, I'm not surprised. You could tell. Yeah. All right, let's go to our final scores on Imaginary. You guys coming in fourth place this week. Good, I grabbed the right card. IMDb is giving us <laughs> a five point seven. Rotten Tomatoes critic score twenty five percent. Audience score fifty three percent. Rich, you gave it a 42. I gave it a 54 for a total average score of 48. That's a two point yeah. higher than Night Shift. Yeah. That shows you where we're at. Um, all right. Jay, what's up, my brother? What's up, Jay? And you? Everybody saying, hey. So made enough to justify a sequel. Yep, that's exactly yeah. what <laughs> exactly yeah. what Rich is talking about. If you can do that with a horror movie, you're okay. We're yeah. gonna put out another one. If 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 we can keep the budget low, we can make 25, 30 million bucks. Cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. All right. So let's go into number three. <laughs> Rough start to the week. Oh yeah. It yeah. just keeps getting better. <laughs> um, all right. So coming in at number three is what you thought was going to be number four, and that is Rumble Through the Dark. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't like this one either. This was... Um, I actually kind of like this. I, this I, is, I was bored with this. I, <clears throat> it is. It's slow. It's slow. It's trying to be, you know, trying to put cinematography in here. It didn't need to do that. <laughs> um because I was like, okay, that was a cool visual, but why? Yeah. <laughs> it's a fighting movie. <laughs> yeah. It's an underground fighting movie. Um, you don't need to give me, like, flashes and dark shadows and shit. Mm-hmm. I don't need any of that crap. Just have them fight. Show me some good fight scenes. 
Um, Aaron Eckhart was decent in this. Um, I thought he did pretty good acting wise. Yeah. Um, um, he, so uh, let me read the synopsis on this. It says in the dark landscape of the Mississippi Delta, a bare knuckle cage fighter seeks to repay his debts in a final desperate attempt to salvage the family home of his dying foster mother. I did like that. There wasn't enough backstory. There was yeah. a, they were trying to do character development through flashbacks through the movie. It didn't work. It didn't work. They uh -huh. needed a little bit more in the beginning. And, and I'm going to say like the Marsh King's daughter did. And we'll talk about that mm -hmm. in a little bit. Marsh King's daughter did it right. I think I agree. Um, Rumble through the dark did not. And there's, there's, there's some similarities between these two movies. I agree. Um, I did. I liked this. I liked the fights. I thought Bella Thorne was hot in a, I'm oh, going to get right. gonorrhea sort of way. Yeah, she was. But, she got that trashy, you know, <laughs> there's all tra yeah, I, she's going to give me an STD, but she was <laughs> cute. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um, yeah. <laughs> she's sexy anyways. <laughs> Uh, would have watched more, but limited access here. I get yeah, you. Right? I, guess you I know. Right. What's up, Davey Richards? <laughs> What's up, Cal? We've got a new <laughs> alter ego, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, love it. Hope okay. you're doing good, Cal. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, he, he, he's, he's fighting and he's, he's definitely had like head trauma. <laughs> because it, his brain scrambled, he doesn't remember anything. He's yeah. doing all kinds of stuff. He's getting he he hears bells ringing yeah. and 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 drops, you know, and um. So he wins. He wins some money gambling, and then um gets basically robbed yeah. and tries to take the money, but gets in an accident. And so as it goes through this whole thing. Dude's come, got bad luck. It just he just got a he's got to run a bad luck. And he, um, and then enters, you know, this mob prostitute, um, who's <laughs> who who is looking for her dad, and seems yeah, to that was that weird. I was like, I was like, how? She was, I, was, and they really didn't follow up on it. No. Like it was like, oh, you could be my daddy, and it's like, okay, that's that's a little creepy. <laughs> yeah. Um, What's she talking about? Like biological dad or like daddy, daddy or zaddy which i guess is the term for the mm -hmm, like yum yum mm -hmm. daddy um but i'm like i, I don't i don't see i was like I, I would rather of them just you know because there was a reason for them to come together yeah um with the money so they could have just done that they didn't need to do this whole you know father. this whole father daughter thing yeah. which they didn't even confirm yeah. or deny it was just kind of like you could be my daddy. And he's like, I don't care. People, I'm blah, blah, blah. And then that's pretty much what he did because he was just all confused. Um, Marianne Jean Baptiste is in this. Yeah. Um, and I love her. I haven't seen her do a whole lot of anything recently. Um, and she plays Mama, who is like the head of the criminal organization in the bayou. Um, but yeah, it's in Mississippi. I thought it was in Louisiana, but either way, I wanted to take a shower after this because. Everything was dirty. It was yeah. It was grimy. This movie was grimy. Um, the carnival was grimy. Um, <laughs> like I said, Bella Thorne was grimy, but hot. Yeah. <laughs> like it's like have the penicillin on hand and I'll date her. <laughs> where I'm going with that. And I, you know, and I hate to because she was like, she was right here with Zendaya back in the day. They were together mm -hmm. on a show. And then Zendaya did this, and Bella Th did yeah. that. But but hey, to each their own. I don't know if those tattoos are real. I, I'm just, I don't. It was just I was watching, going, hmm, she looked. Wait, no, no. <laughs> um, right. Um, and the anyway, end fight scene was pretty uh, cool. The end fight scene was good. It, yeah. it did ex it did exactly what you would want it to do. Yeah. yeah, there's no, there's no uh, surprises here. No, no, no surprises. Like I said, there's a little board. bit of a you know, there's there's a little bit of a thing here. But yeah, the the twist they didn't need that. They didn't need the whole "you could be my daddy." They could have got rid of that, and it would have been fine. 
Um, she could have still had cared for him because he like saved her life basically. Yeah, well, she was getting mugged or and gonna get raped. She was, she was getting raped and yeah, well, mugged and raped. Uh, so we'll call it rugged. She was getting rugged. Yeah. Um, but gotta say, gotta say hey to Wilkie, Mr. Corey yeah. is in the house. I hope uh, your ears were burning, your nose was itching earlier. Yeah, because we were talking about you. Um, and I did text you before, so it's a go for April 24th. If you want to join Rob, Rich, and myself, we're going to do a four-way on April 24th. So, Corey, if you're in, say you're in. And But, yeah, I I liked it. I would watch it again. I bought okay. it. So I'm gl- I'm kind of glad I bought it. I overpaid it. I, I think it's worth about maybe 10 but <clears throat> I paid 15 <laughs> Um, but I still, I enjoyed the movie. Uh, I, I would watch the fights in a- again. I think it was, I think it was pretty good. Awesome. Um, Corey is in. So that confirms we got a four way. We got a four way dance on April 24th. That's going to be awesome. Um, all right, you guys. I nice slip. I like to slip on it. Yep. Pretty good slip. Um, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Aaron Eckhart does a pretty good job. Yeah. I think the acting was decent. I think the action was decent. I think it, the the director or whoever was doing the the cinematography, I think they were trying too hard. Yeah. Uh, they didn't need to go through all that crap that they did. And this they is the second Aaron Eckhart movie we've done this year. It's the same, you know. It's sad to see because he's a good actor. Yeah. And it's, to me, it's sad to see him kind of go this route of straight <laughs> to DVD movies. Yep. Hold the phone. Rob is going to join the show. Nice. Yes, he is. Rob is joining us on April 24th. So that's going to be really cool. Um, and there's the train. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, let's go to our highlights on this one. There we are. Um, uh, yeah, again, you're in the you're in the sixes and fives mostly. Seven mm-hmm. for the cast. Six for the acting, six for the visuals, fives for just about everything else. Where do you think Aaron Eckhart's peaked? Was it The Dark Knight? Was it Battle of Los Angeles? I think it was Battle of Los Angeles. You think he peaked there? I think he peaked there. Not The Dark Knight? Yeah. No. I, I, Because I, he was such a sub-character in The Dark Knight. Where he, he was the main guy in Battle of Los Angeles. Well, you're right. You're right. Um, I do like both performances. I, I'm gonna go I, with both. I think those are his best roles. Yeah, I mean, I I loved the core. Um, yeah, because he I, was I, still bust. He's yeah. I forgot about the core, but that's that was nice. like his, that's early, early stuff. Yeah, I did like I Frankenstein, but he was dropping at that point. Um, yeah. I like. Oh no, I got I got to go with Olympus has fallen. I liked his role as president there. Oh, oh shit, I forgot about that too. Um, so those are my three favorite Aaron Hopper movies. Yeah, I got to go with Olympus has fallen. I, I did like him in London has fallen, but basically he was just captured. Yeah. He didn't he had more interaction in he was captured in both, but mm-hmm. um, in the first movie he had more interaction with the terrorists than he did in in the second one. Yeah. <clears throat> So we're, we're our final. Yeah, I actually had fun with Battle Los Angeles. Yeah, me too. That's a good movie. Um, if you if you look, that poster right there is Battle Los Angeles. <laughs> um, hey, what's up, Cody? What's it's good up, to see Cody? you. Cody's in the house. First time I've seen you on here, man. Thank you for jumping yeah, in. I appreciate thanks for that. jumping in, man. Um, that was an Ice Pirates reference. Uh, I know you keep wanting us to watch that for Nerf Herders, but we can't get all we can't get together. Um, but yeah, it's good to see Cody. All right. I did not do my highlights. Let me take that. Um, I gave an eight to the cast an eight to the ending, a seven to the visuals and then sixes to pretty much everything else. Oh no. I gave a seven to the genre too. Cause I think it was a pretty good action movie. Um, <clears throat> action thriller, not much of a good thriller. Cause it wasn't really suspenseful. Mm-hmm. Um, it had some intensity to it, but it was more like this guy shouldn't be fighting. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then somehow he wins and he brass. wins his fights. Um, maybe it's the brass knuckles. I don't know, but <laughs> um, but 
I I think this is worth a watch, but I don't think you should have to pay for it. No. Um, Rich, on the other hand, not much of a fan. He didn't really I care didn't. for it. I liked it. Um, so <laughs> do with that what you will, my friends. We're, we're, we split go, on this. we're split on this one. Let's go into, I don't think it's a great watch. I just think it's worth seeing. Um, Maybe let's if it hits Netflix, watch it. If it yeah, I was going to say, if it's, if it's free on streaming somewhere, give yeah. it a look. Right now, it's on Tubi, you guys. So if you oh, want to watch it on Tubi, it's available. Um, otherwise, it's you know you can rent it on Prime or Vudu or whatever for four ninety nine. But if you got Tubi, yeah, don't waste five bucks. Don't waste five bucks. Going or or like me, I wasted fifteen. I I I would think uh, I'm I overpaid, but mm -hmm. I would I would buy this as if it was under ten. But I paid 15 for this. So, yeah. Um, all right. Let's go to our final scores on Rumble Through the Dark coming in third place, you guys. IMDb is giving this a 6.0. Rotten Tomatoes critic score 64%. Audience score 97%. No fucking way. Yeah. Again, I don't think there's very many people that are watching it. It's probably just all cast, yeah. <laughs> cast and crew, cast and crew. Let me double check that. Um, oh no, 500 plus ratings. So what? 500 plus ratings, 97% liked it. Wow. So see, I'm not stupid. <laughs> well, not all, all film stupid. is subjective. All film is subjective. Um, but Rich, you gave it a 53. I gave it a 65 for a total average score of 59. And that takes wow. third place. So th this this is something I, I would watch again. This would be okay for me. I'm actually kind of glad I have it because I would I would watch this again, um, but I still think I overpaid for the movie. It's yeah. not that good. Jelly never heard this. That's why we're here, mm -hmm. is to hopefully you know give you something you haven't heard of or something that you're interested in but you haven't, you know, bite you didn't bite the bullet on yet, that we can at least advise you on what we think of it. Um, is that another Blu-ray release in a DVD case? No, this no, is a Blu-ray Blu case. Yeah, it's a Blu-ray case. Blu-ray case. I saw the blue when you. Blu-ray case. Yeah. I don't. I don't like Blu-ray releases and DVD cases. Yeah. Did you see those 4K releases that Walmart did with the 4K Blu-ray DVD, DVD case? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't touch them. Yeah. With great price, but yeah, you know, good price on them. But I was like, nope. They wouldn't fit on my shelf. <laughs> yep. No. I mean, they would fit. I have DVD shelves, yeah, but they're not meant for 4K. <laughs> they're meant for they're meant for DVDs. That would really screw up my system. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're getting we're getting into our our top two movies, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you. So we have um, again. This is a first for us. Something that has never happened in the history of doing our show. Uh oh, and that is. The top two movies have exactly the same score. Really? For each of us. So oh. there is no there was no tie break here. Oh shit. Because we both gave each movie the same score. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> um speaking of crazy, what's up, Miss K man? What's up, Miss K man? I hope you're doing good. good. Good to see you. Um she's so awesome, just like Guy. Yeah. So I also want to oh shout out to my son Eric for giving us a like on Facebook. Yeah, thank you for that. Um all right. So so our top two movies, like I said, exact same score. <laughs> That's crazy. So because um one movie is significantly older than the other one, because one movie came out quite a bit earlier, mm -hmm. but has recently come out to physical. The other one has been in the theater recently and has just come out to physical. Um, what is this? I bought All Quiet on the Western Front, 4K Digibook, which is, yeah, I have that too. Oh, well, see, I, I need to get that. I have not bought that movie yet. They have they have a steel book now that was at Walmart. Oh. I don't know if you can find it, but they had a 4K steel book at Walmart. I almost grabbed it. Uh, I, but I, I have that 4K Digibook thing, but yeah, it's in a DVD case, and I'm like, 
Um, it's DVD sized. But I also have Lighthouse from A24, and that that box is like that. It's like Ooh. it's like twice the size of a DVD. You know, I've never seen Lighthouse. I have, I actually haven't watched it either. I got it. I won it in a contest. <laughs> And I was like, oh, one of these days I'll watch that. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Um, but it's sitting on my shelf, and I had to put it on top because it doesn't fit right. on the shelves. Um, <laughs> hey, baby. That's right. Caveman. Or unless he's talking to me, but I, I don't think so. Um, I, I'm pretty sure he's talking to Miss Caveman. I'm pretty sure he's talking to Miss Caveman. Yeah. So, he, yeah. That's your guys' thing. He calls you baby. Hey, no judgment here, man. Yeah, no judgment. Um, the lighthouse is my kind of movie. Yeah, I haven't. I've got it. I just haven't watched it yet. You all need to check out Lighthouse. I agree. Hi, uh, sweetie. Okay, this is getting a little. Mm. This is a G-rated show, guys. Come on. This is not a G-rated show. <laughs> but you know, but this this makes me want to just. Okay, you guys go ahead and just talk. Yeah, go ahead. I I know you guys are in separate places right now. You guys do your thing. Yeah, you guys do you. We'll just <laughs> say bye. <laughs> but. All right, so, um, but the fact that, you know, because what we usually do is when we have a, a tie average score, we take, you know, the one that our scores are closer together wins. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, that couldn't do it this time. Um, and we've never had that before. Yeah, that's great. This is what we gave the, this is the, both movies, we scored them exactly the same. Yeah. That's crazy. So, and all I have to say to that is, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, <love> um, <laughs> I, I, I'm keeping those forever. Yeah. Um, the lighthouse didn't work for me, but I get it. I, I don't know. I don't like black and white movies and I know it's in black and white. So that's gonna, it's gonna bug me, but I did like El Condi. I liked the count. I oh, thought yeah, that, that was good. good. That was, that was, that was good. Yeah. And I think it deserved yeah, a, a cinematography nomination. Oh yeah. So that was that pretty surprised cool. me when I saw that. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. But all right. Um, so I just I went ahead and did this order, but technically this is a legit tie for first place with these two movies. So let's talk about the Marsh King's daughter first. Um I liked this. I I enjoyed this. Yeah. This was good. Yeah. It's not fantastic. But it's but it's good. It's mm. suspenseful. It's got intensity. Mm -hmm. I I like Daisy Ridley in this. I was just gonna say that she's actually good in this. She, she did really good in mm -hmm. this. I I forget she really did. that she's a really good actress after just seeing her in the Star Wars stuff. I, I don't mind her in the Star Wars. I watched I don't that. mind her in it, was but it, it I don't chaos? see her as a great actress. No. Um. But I think she was in. She the was in one of the Murder on the Orient Express or Death on the Nile. I think Murder on the Orient Express she was in. And she's in the one with Tom Holland. I think it's called Chaos. I didn't like that movie. I think it's Chaos or something like that. That's something like that. Yeah, and yeah. I don't think I watched that. <coughs> um, it had an interesting premise. It's just not very well executed. It has a cool steel book to it. Yeah. Let me read the... Um, what is Chaos Walking? Yeah, Chaos Walking. That the one, yeah. I don't think she's in that one. Oh, I do have that. Talking. I do have that. I did like that where the, you know the man's thoughts are like projected yeah, or something. Was it her? Yeah, I, I know there was some... her. Okay, I know she did something with him, but I thought it was the one where he's um, he's got PTSD or something. Oh, I no, could be thinking of something else. Um, anyway, so really simple synopsis here. It says a woman seeks revenge against the man who kidnapped her mother. So, um, basically how this story goes is Daisy Ridley plays a, a little girl in the beginning of the movie and the man who she thinks is her father kidnapped her mother, took her out to the woods, raped her and got her pregnant, yep. <laughs> had a baby. And then they lived in the woods for like 10 years before he got captured and put in jail. So cut to she's an adult and the father escapes from jail. Yeah. And now they're going to deal with that. Um, it's got a good cast. Uh, I'm not a Ben Mendelsohn fan. I think he did okay here. I, I, I like him in this. 
I, there's, I'm not. A this is this is either. not his normal thing. Yeah, um, I liked him in this and in that Stephen King TV show he did on Max. I yeah. Forget what it was called. Uh, Jay says you're right. It's Chaos Walking. So, yeah. um, Caveman really enjoyed this. I hate the fact that she seems to suffer the curse of being a lead in a Star Wars film as to not getting a good following. I, I agree. That was that was kind of the point I was trying to make. Yeah. Um, but I think some that, of that has to be from the toxic Star Wars fans. That, yeah. you know, they shit on something because they're pussies and they can't handle shit. Um, yeah. but she was, it follows she was her. They refuse really, to accept her as an actress. Yeah, she was really good. Mm -hmm. She was really good in this. Uh, yeah. I, I liked her, you know, and of course you got you got Garrett Hedlund is in it. Mm -hmm. um, I liked him in this. I liked the girl. I liked the daughter in this. Yeah. And I liked her as the little girl in the beginning. But this is the one where this is different from Rumble Through the Dark, in which um, they played the the character development right. They did it all in the beginning. They put it together so you know what's going on. Yeah. Whereas. I with Rumble Through the Dark, you're like, okay, this boy, is that him? Or what's happening? Yeah. Was he adopted? Was he fostered? Did did his parents... What happened with him? And you just get, like, bits and pieces to try to put it together. But I liked that in the fact that it kind of resembles his own mind Yeah. in Rumble Through the Dark, but I wanted it to be more cohesive for me. So I, I understood his backstory. The flashback scene, for me, which made the whole movie was the escape scene where um the thing that sticks out for me was the mom's facial expressions that whole scene was like that's my favorite scene in the whole movie i absolutely loved it um it was just like you you felt her terror like we got to go get us out of here you yeah. know and then something happened i'm not gonna spoil the movie i've seen it yeah uh, now and you know what um what Daisy Ridley believed, what her character believed as a child, mm -hmm. when she started to get like her true memories or trying to or actually realized what was really going on. I, I love, I loved that. Yeah. The unraveling. Of yeah. When it, when everything unraveled for her. Yeah. Um, and I kind of wanted more of that instead of it just going from her being a kid to being an adult, more of that. In that between. transition, um, but still, I like this. I think this this is my favorite of the group. Not me. Of five movies. No, I know not yours. That's why we're doing the other movie next. I, I another thing I liked was the um, practical effects on Daisy Ridley um, of the scars of the tattoo things they put he put on her. I thought that was a pretty cool touch. I liked that. Yeah, I like the tattoos and stuff that he put on her and the significance of those tattoos. Yes, yeah. I did like that. Um, K-Man, you're exactly right. Cody, if you want to see this one, it is on Hulu right now, but it is also on physical release. Yeah, it's definitely worth watching. I, I think this is a, um, a very underrated movie that it was in yeah, the theaters. This, this was good. This was really good. I enjoyed this a lot. Yeah. I'm glad you finally got to see it so we can put it on here. Yeah, me too. Because I, I was like, hey, did we forget about that? We did I, I it bought it. Yeah, it, it does break our rule, but it just hit Hulu. Yeah, so it's so it's kind of like a month and a half ago it hit Hulu. So um so it just kind of hit um it, it just it's just outside of our window. We're trying to we're trying to watch the movie and review it within a month of a release yeah. date, whether it's theatrical streaming or physical um and it just so happened it's it's been out on physical for a few months i know. will i plan um, on buying this oh yeah that's my i'm glad i bought it I, yeah, i'm glad i bought this I, I i enjoyed it i'd watch it again yeah. um <clears throat> but yeah i i dug it i think this is good yeah i, I liked it this is definitely worth seeing yeah let's go to our highlights on it and let's see. So you're, uh, if I'm looking at the right thing. Okay. So yeah, Rich, you got some eights in here. You got eights for acting, the trailer, story, visuals, genre, and subgenre. 
seven for cast ending direction um and then like a five in there i think uh i gave a nine to the ending i i really liked how this ended i gave eights to the acting story and genre and i gave sevens to the cast trailer visuals direction and subgenre um Hey, what's up, Tiana? What's up, Tiana? I hope you're doing nice good. You? Um, I'm glad. I'm glad you picked this up, Cody. Or check it out on Hulu. Either one. Yeah. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm. I'm saying this is worth a watch. It's, um, not. I I didn't have to take a shower as fast as I did with <laughs> Rumble Through the Dark, even though it seemed like it was, you know, both like you know in the Bayou or like marshlands or whatever. But Rumble Through the Dark seemed almost. M- post-apocalyptic it did it really in, did in the way that they filmed it and where they were at and you know the the junkyard thing where they did the fighting from and uh, it seemed more like almost post-apocalyptic or like a dystopian thing whereas this seemed more like normal like modern yeah like what we're dealing with now um and you weren't getting an std from this movie no no, but I definitely wouldn't be running around in the forest if either one of those people <laughs> were there. <laughs> um, but love it. So the husband was really good in Desperate. Yeah, we reviewed Desperation Road. That was yeah. Garrett Hedlund, and he was good in that. And he was good here, too. Yeah. Um, this is a great cast. Loved it. There, look at it. <laughs> if, if you knew what we talk, what we were talking about... <laughs> Um, it uh, it definitely it had to do with uh, well, had to do with Bella Thorne in Rumble Through the Dark. We were we were talking about that. Um, but yeah, Rumble Through the Dark is just grimy. It's just a grimy movie. It is. Um, but you have to, you get an STD and you might get tetanus. You never know. Yeah, I think you definitely get tetanus. Maybe <laughs> rabies. Yeah, depending on who bought you, depending on who bit you. If it was. If Aaron Eckhart, you would probably get rabies. If it was Bella, you'd probably get a tetanus shot, possibly um, gonorrhea. Um, but Evan, okay. hey, sorry I'm late. The sun is out later, so went on a family walk. Hey, Dude, family totally cool comes brother. first, man. Good to see you. Um, we we are totally okay with that. Uh, but I I I enjoyed this. I think this is worth a watch. I would um, agree. Let's go to our final scores on the Marsh King's daughter that tied for first, you guys. First time we've ever had an actual, like, full-on tie score for for any of these movies. Usually we have some kind of tiebreaker, but there was no such thing this time. It's really interesting. Um, IMDb is giving this a 5.9. Rotten Tomatoes critic score, 41%. Audience score, 73%. Rich, you gave it a 74, and I gave it a 73 for an average score of 73.5. Yeah, that's a great score. And we're right there with the critics or the Rotten Tomatoes audience score. Yeah. I love it how everybody's so friendly. I, I, I love the community. Want to see Definitely this check it out, Tiana. It's, yeah, it's really I, I think you like this, Tiana. This yeah. was this was good. I, I enjoyed this. Yeah. All right. Let's get to the the movie that tied with the Marsh King's daughter for first place this week. But before we do, we need to acknowledge our sponsor, and that is Spotify for podcasting. They take the audio portion of this podcast and they put it out on their system through Spotify. They also put it out on other podcast stations like amazon music iHeartRadio, radio pocket cast cast box radio public and google podcast they do it all for free they set us up with sponsors and then once we get more followers they give us more sponsors so if you guys get a chance go over to spotify give us a follow look for the faces for radio and once you give us a follow then you can listen to us on any of your podcast stations yeah it's so funny. Uh, my buddy Chris, I work with, he, he's a fan of our show. He watches most of this is on Spotify. He goes, man, I got to admit something to you, man. Don't get mad. And I was like, what? And he goes, <laughs> I fucking die laughing. He goes, we're working. He stops by and he's like, um, 
ask. Sometimes when I'm tired and I can't sleep, I put you guys on and I fall right to sleep. <laughs> I'm hey, like, it works for my that. grandson. It works for my grandson. <laughs> they do that too. I said, hey. We're here that's for because you, we have such sultry voices. That's it, man. Yeah. We do. Yeah, that's it. We, <laughs> I don't mind if you fall asleep listening to us. It's Ooh. totally fine. But yeah. in fact, yeah, my my son will put our our podcast on or Spirits with Spirits when my grandson is up, because once my grandson hears my voice, then he falls asleep. <laughs> because he's like, "Oh, I hear Appa." So, um, that's awesome. And that's what my grandkids call me. And my grandkids call me Appa. Um, because I'm a furry bison that transports them to places. <laughs> um, but also, well, because that's what Piper called me, so she couldn't say grandpa. So Appa was the word, right? She started calling me, and because of that, that went vicariously to Desmond, my grandson, and now he calls me Appa. <laughs> so, so I am now Appa, and I I'm going to no be an Appa here in May. Which You're going to be an Appa, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that means more gray in the beard I, I is going to happen. I, I'm all gray. Well, pretty soon, I just barely have a little bit left. You do. As soon as I get, I'll get one more grandkid and it'll be all white. <laughs> um, <laughs> but <laughs> with sponsors, you get t-shirts too, man. I'm well, I'm working on Me some too. merch. Yeah, I'm working on some merch. We got we got some merch going for Spirits with Spirits, and my my buddy's wife does the shirts and mugs and stuff like that. So uh, when we're ready to start doing merch for faces for radio, they're going to make the shirts and everything so that we can, we can do that. So, so we're going to do all our own merch and all that good stuff. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> we can't all have Corey's sexy NPR voice. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's true. Um, <clears throat> but let's go to our number our, one movie. Number one movie tied for first. I, I mean, I, I really these could these could switch off for me. Um, I I will pick Marsh King's daughter over this one, Let's but this one. surprised me. I like this. Yeah, I like this. Is, um, anyone but you comes in um, tied for first with the Marsh King's daughter, and uh, if you guys know me, you know that I am not a romantic comedy fan. And if you know me, you really know me personally. I love romantic. Love. I am a romantic person at heart. I mean, if you see my Instagram posts, some of them, um, you know, I, I'm just romantic. I, I like love. Yeah. So this is really he loves re- love. I um, do. Um, this but, was this was a great movie. It surprised me. Glenn Powell's fantastic, and Sydney Sweeney, fuck, she's gorgeous. Even she's pretty in fucking Madam Web. Yeah. Um, let's go. Let's look at the synopsis on this. It says after an amazing first date, B and Ben's fiery attraction turns ice cold until they find themselves unexpectedly reunited at a wedding in Australia. So they do what any two mature adults would do. Pretend to be a couple. Um, okay. I'm so excited about anyone but you haven't watched it yet. It's okay. good. I I like love, not love it. Hmm. Another classic quote from Rich. I know that's why I was like, he loves love. I do. I, it just came out I, like I, I like know. love, but I love like. <laughs> <laughs> I do love love, man. And you, you, if anybody knows me, knows I do. Um. But yeah. So again, I, I bought the Blu-ray on this, um, and I'm I'm okay with that. I, I like I liked it. I'd watch this again. Now, this is, you know, to me, it's the cliche rom-com. Mm-hmm. It's got it's got all the stuff, and it does kind of like what Friends with Benefits does, because Friends with Benefits is one of my five favorite rom-coms. Mm-hmm. And what it does is it makes fun of other rom-coms, and that's exactly what this does. It does. Is, is it makes fun of other rom-coms. Um, there's... There's some really good funny parts. There's some great chemistry here. Yeah, the chemistry is uh, off the charts. I I loved Sydney Sweeney in the blue dress. I, but I don't know. There was something up with her eyes that really kind of threw me. I do think she's beautiful. But there's there's one scene in particular. I think it was in the coffee shop where I was like, 
okay, like one eye went this way and one eye went, I was like, <laughs> did you have something on your glasses or something? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> something, something was weird. And it was like, is she an alien? I'm just trying to figure this out. Is <laughs> she's a reptilian or something? But, um, but I enjoyed it. I like Glenn Palinus. Oh. Glenn, um, man, he's got a movie coming up on Netflix. That looks it's it's got a it's got a good cast. A Dermot Mulroney is in this. Uh, Brian Brown from the FX movies is in this. Uh, the the one person I didn't like is kind of like the center of the entire movie, and that's the one who played Pete. Yeah, the brother of the mm -hmm. one of the brides, right? I didn't like him. Why? I, I don't know. I didn't find him funny. I found him just ridiculous. Oh. I did not find and he's supposed to be the comic relief, the the plucky like in between guy. And I was just I just wanted him to shut up. I didn't I didn't I, like I didn't him. get that. I, I didn't I didn't care for him at all. But aside from that, I, I enjoyed the movie. I, I thought I thought it was funny. Yeah. In in particular, the end credits. If you're gonna watch this movie, do not shut this off when the credits start. Watch all the way through the credits. See, I didn't do that. I left. Oh my god, it's the funniest part of the movie, bro. What did I miss? See, I didn't. See, I just left okay. the credits. Hit. So, so the song that's his his Serenity song. Mm -hmm. Okay, they all sing this song at the end. During the credits, they reenact every scene of the movie singing the song. Oh damn! Including. The butthole. No. -uh. <laughs> yes. They're singing the song and Sydney's looking up his butthole. <laughs> um, I, oh. there's if you guys if you guys get the Blu-ray, there's outtakes um where you know the he's naked and she's not, and apparently she's looking up his butthole and they make eye contact, and it's like they all go, duh, you know, <laughs> they make eye contact. It was just because he was really naked. Oh, was he? Yeah, he was really naked. <laughs> he was really I hope, up well. I hope Glenn Powell, Glenn Powell blows up because uh, he, he's a he good needs, actor. He needs to. I mean, at first it was like, um, it's funny because and you know, um, I I don't know if this is racist or not because it's it's my daughter, but she basically Glenn Powell she calls that white guy. Because she, he just looks like every like white male lead. Like, I see what you're there. Yeah, she, she's like, oh, that white guy. And I was like, okay, that seems a little racist. I said, but you know, it's coming from you, so I don't, I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> um, but well, yeah, for, for a while there, he because he did Devotion mm -hmm. with Jonathan Majors, and he was good in that. Top he did Maverick. Maverick, he was good in that. This. Um, and he's got, and, I think it's called Hitman. That's coming to Netflix in May. I think like, it's May. Like bald hitman, like from the game, or no? I think it's just a, a movie. Just time. like, yeah, yeah. Unwritten is the name of the song. So they're so basically the the end credits. They're singing unwritten, doing this the scenes from the movie. See now I'm gonna so, have to like they yeah. like they cut away, like they they did the scene and then they filmed them singing the song in that scene and it was like. It was it was hilarious. Yeah, I just got up and left. It, it, it was it was the funniest part of the movie. I was I was laughing so hard at the end of that. So it raised the comedy score on this for <laughs> me. Like two points. I was I think, like I think this is definitely worth seeing. Um this was funny. This this was funny. It was yeah. it was cute. It was it was cringe. It was obnoxious. Um because it's trying to be like eh, like every rom com, but it works. But it's it's deliberately saying, okay, mm -hmm. this is a cringe moment, or this is making me gag. This is so lame that we're doing this because they're pretending to be a couple. Mm -hmm. So I liked it. I, I had fun. I think I told you when I first saw the theater. I was like, yeah, man, that's you like. Well, it was basically because you were like, dude, I liked it. It was really good. Blah blah. blah. And I'm hearing so many good things about it in the theater. Then I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and blind buy it yeah. so that we can review it. Um, because I think, I think regardless, I I'm a big, I'm a fan of both of these leads. So I, I was already like ready to watch it. Yeah. Um, 
What is... Okay, I gotta get, I gotta get to the chats. Um, my wife made fun of me when we got married. <laughs> I own more romantic movies than she did, but I'm There's nothing wrong with that, man. I'm I'm wrong with that. I enjoy, like, love, head over heels for love. Okay. Yeah, that's me, bro. Um, so she's not the good-looking girl that was really an alien in Mars Attacks. Uh, <laughs> Natasha Benningfield. Okay, Natasha Benningfield was the alien in Species. Um, I don't know if she was in Mars Attacks, but... Sydney Sweeney is very gorgeous. I would pretend to be a couple with her any day. Me too. Right. Um, note to self, engage Marvel protocol, stay for credits. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, heard mixed things about this one. I, I you know what? I enjoyed, I think, I think it's still, it's still a cringy, like cliche rom-com, but if you like rom-coms, you'd like this. And this made a lot of money in the theater. It did. Oh, I should check that. Um, use a phrase that blows up <laughs> while talking about his butthole. <laughs> the rest is still unwritten. Um, <laughs> but yeah, let's, let's Tiana see. posted a, a movie I hadn't seen that I put it in. It's a romantic comedy too. That mm -hmm. I put it in my Peacock playlist because I want to. I don't remember what it was called. It's in my. Damn. Uh, yeah, Tiana, oh, what was that called? You posted it. It has Kristen Bell in it, I think. Um. I forget, I forget who else. But yeah, that's another one. It, was, it would be a first time watch for me. Hmm. Um, well, yeah, it had a budget of $25 million, made $214.9 yeah. I don't Boston. think we've had a, a, in a long time a good quality romantic comedy. And I, think I agree with that. Good. I mean, it, it was, it'd been a while before we actually had a really good comedy. Yeah. You know, and then we we got Joyride and we got No Hard Feelings yeah. last year, but we haven't had a good rom com in a while. Yeah. And it, I knew it made a lot of money, but I didn't know it made two hundred million. Two hundred, yeah, two hundred fourteen, almost two hundred fifteen million. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's that's impressive. Really good. Of course, saying head cow. I wonder how. I don't think Marsh King's daughter was in the theater, was it? Or did it? It, it was, was in the theater, but it didn't. It was, it was, it was kind of like Covenant. It was in and out. Oh, so yeah, it was limited. and Yeah. <clears throat> Let me just see. Yeah. Uh, one. Yeah, it was like $3 million yeah. box office. I don't have a budget on it. It made $3 million in the box office. Yeah. Interesting. But these two movies, fantastic. They were great movies. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed um, these. The shitty week. Cool. I appreciate that, Cody. Let us know your thoughts on it if you yeah. when you come back. Yeah. I don't want to say F because I'm expecting you to come back now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, let's take a look at our highlights on anyone but you coming in tied for first, you guys. So, Rich, you gave nine to the cast, nine to the story. Eight to the acting, eight to ending, eight to genre and subgenre, and then a seven to the direction. I gave a 10 to the cast, eight to the ending, genre and subgenre, and then sevens to acting, visuals, direction, and sound. Um, and and because <clears throat> again, um, they put they did unwritten at the end of the movie and i had to give an extra point for that because they were all singing the song at different times of the of the ending which was really cool um killers is on peacock and is really good with ashton kutcher pierce brosnan and Catherine o'hara um and if i'm not mistaken is that Catherine heigl and killers did we watch that well, that was a Netflix movie with where uh, yeah, Brosnan. Catherine Heigl. And this is 2010, so no, this isn't the right, the one that we saw, but we did see something similar to this. Yeah, or Pierce Bronson is a hitman. Yeah, <clears throat> that was the oh, that was a stupid one with Al Adam Devine and yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I forget who Pierce Bronson's wife was.
trying to remember the name of that damn movie. It was. See, we watch a lot of movies. We do. That was pretty recent. Outlaws. That's what it was. Yeah. It was Outlaws, and who was Pierce? Bro- it was um no, it was um Ellen Barkin, was the wife. Okay. But yeah, that's Catherine Heigl's in that one in Killers. <clears throat> I like that. That was fun. Um, what's up, Huck? What's up, Huck? Hope you're doing good, man. Good, good buddy, Huckster. I was able to catch part of his um his morning mug that he does Tuesday mornings. So if you guys get a chance, definitely check that out. It's at 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. <clears throat> I think 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. Um, and he goes for like an hour or so, talks about box office numbers and and stories and things like that. Kind of like our movie news at 5, yeah. which is coming up on Friday. Um, not to segue from Huck's <laughs> show to our show, but we do a movie news show mm-hmm. um, on Friday nights at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, where we talk about new releases theatrical trailers um things that just dropped um what's coming out to streaming any you know rest in peace moments any people that have died over the week um and then five pieces of movie news um that that seem interesting to us yeah whatever we can find that yeah that we find interesting um killers is killers on the what um catherine heigl was in killers thank you thought so thanks guys um because i'm trying to remember because i remember um killers kind of reminds me of night and day and i know this is a tom cruise movie that actually rich doesn't like yeah um because i like night and day but they're they're very similar night and day and killers are very similar in the fact that one's like a cia agent and one's a just supposedly a regular girl but she ends up doing stuff um so but night and day has cameron diaz and Catherine Heigl's and Killers. So, and they came out at pretty much the same time. Actually. I think you're right. Did you see what Pooper Brain's getting a 4K release? I did not see that. Yeah. But everybody's saying, what's up to Huck? A butter smooth segue, David. Thank you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. Let's segue right back into the movie. I'm with Rich. Night and day wasn't good. Thanks, Del. Um, yeah. So let's let's go to our final scores on anyone but you coming in tied for first, you guys, with the Marsh King's daughter. There it is. IMDb is giving this a 6.2. Rotten Tomatoes critic score 56%. Audience score 87%. And again, Rich gave it a 74 I gave it a 73 <laughs> for a total average score of 73.5. That's crazy. I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I was yeah, like, I didn't know this guys until we went on air. No, because he he wants to be surprised with the total mm-hmm. scores. And um, so he just sends me his individual scores for each category, and then I total them up. And I basically I do my scores and then I put his scores in so that I'm not influenced. Um, yeah. and then, you know, and then average amount, and then I do the outro for the show, but what does I say? Um, night and day is actually a good movie. Killers is awful. Okay. Evan. Thank it's you. Okay that you're wrong, Evan, I enjoyed Evan. night and day as well. And purple rain on 4k. Yes, please. Purple rain on 4k. Yes. Hopefully in a purple <laughs> steelbook, dude, I'd get that. Yeah. They know purple rain and, um, the original Terminator. 4K. Um, Dolly, notice we often disagree on the same, <laughs> the same of the silly movies. Um, I like Night and Day. Miss Caveman doesn't because of Cruise. Okay, right. She's not a Cruise fan. Um, same, not same. Um, Night and Day is all right. Okay, I started a debate with Night and Day you and did. Killers, and I apologize. <laughs> I really, I really did not mean to open up a can of worms. You did. <laughs> I did. I totally opened a can of worms here. Um, but we're talking, I, dude, I think anyone but you, okay, we're, we're coming into our final segment, and that is 
Where's my thing? Yes, that is buy, borrow, or bail, where we're going to take our top three movies <laughs> this week and decide which one we buy, which one we borrow, meaning watch once and that's it, and which one we don't want to watch at all. And our three are Anyone But You, Marsh King's Daughter, Rumble Through the Dark, Rich, which one are you buying, borrowing, and bailing on? Of course, I'm going to buy The Love Story. I'm going to buy Anyone But You. I'm going to borrow Marsh King's Daughter, and I'm going to bail on Imaginary. You're going to bail on Rumble Through the Dark. Well, Rumble Through the Dark, yeah, I'm sorry. I was looking at the Imaginary folks. It's, it's the top three, not the bottom two. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I was just looking. My, my eyes are the way you have the poster staggered on the. <laughs> the imaginary, imaginary is at the top. So yeah, I'm gonna bail on that one. Yeah. We're both nailing on imaginary and night shift. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna swap the first two. So I'm gonna buy Marsh King's daughter, borrow anyone but you, and then I will bail on Rumble Through the Dark. Um, even though you bought it, <clears throat> even though I bought it, but I I would watch that again too. But if if I had if I had the choice if I had to pick one of these to watch I would pick anyone but you. Yeah, I totally. But, agree. but if I'm dealing with, um, I don't have anything else here. So something crappy in this, then I'll pick this. If I had night shift in this, then I picked this. Um. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What else we got? Um, yeah, that is the way sometimes. Good. He night. always disagrees with me, though. Good night, everyone. Okay, bail on all of them. Read. <laughs> you weren't even here. <laughs> Bailing on Reed. What's up, Reed? It's good to see you. David bought the first one. I did not. I I bought. You bought all I, three of them. I did buy all three. <laughs> in the, in the, in the. In the top three tonight, um, but I did not. The abyss? I did not. I picked up True Lies and Aliens. See, I, I'm not a fan of True Lies. I don't think I'll pick I, that up. I love True Lies. True uh, Lies is my favorite Schwarzenegger movie. I, I'm gonna get. I already have Aliens on Blu-ray, so I wasn't. Um, yes, I did watch X Men '97. I fucking loved it. It was fantastic. Oh man, if you have, if you guys are not interested in checking out. X Men '97. I encourage you to change your mind. Those first two episodes were amazing. They were uncanny. It's good to see you, brother. Yeah, I haven't seen any of '97 yet, but I love the original the series, so I, I, I'm definitely done uh, watching that. I guess David bought me a movie. Any anyone but you, since he is borrowing it. Yeah, shut up. No. Um, <laughs> so what do we got coming up, man? What's on our schedule here? Oh, that is a good question. Next week is huge, brother. So, mm -hmm. uh, meow. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, my pussy uh, ain't making noises tonight. It just did. We we just heard your pussy. Oh, I didn't um, even hear it. I'm so still, next still... week, next week is is big. Next week we have Alex Figueroa from Geeks and Flex is going to be in house. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have Roadhouse on Prime. <clears throat> Which premieres Friday. Yep. We have Ghostbusters Frozen Afterlife, which also you know hits the theaters well tomorrow. tomorrow. Um, the color purple is on Max, which is on Max. Napoleon, which Apple is on TV. Apple TV Plus, and Kill Me If You Dare, which is on Netflix. Which was interesting. Oh, I, that was interesting, and that is I, a foreign movie. If you guys are going to yeah. watch along with us, it is a foreign movie. Um, so just going to give you a heads up on that. That's what she said. I haven't heard my pussy all night. <laughs> <laughs> Rich's enthusiasm got your pussies all riled up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hear it. I didn't even hear um, But, But, dude, really, really, yeah, it's going to be a really good show next week. And you said uh, um, Spirits of Spirits is moving to Monday starting the 25th. Starting the 25th. Um, Spirits of Spirits. So we don't have a show this week. We're um, starting Mondays, next Monday, the 25th. Um, so we're going to have a show Monday, which is going to be alien events. We're going to be talking about the Foo Fighters of World War II. 
um, on our live stream and then on Scare Network TV. We're going to be talking about the Battle of Los Angeles. Nice. Um, so that's going to be awesome. I think it's going to be great. And then we're skipping Easter and then we're coming back on the 8th with our next um, haunted locations. Awesome. Which is going to be awesome. April 4th <laughs> will be on. Uh... David yeah. is not liking We're both the color not purple. Watching that movie. I don't. I don't want to watch it. I really don't. <laughs> I don't um, either. Um, April fourth. Um, we're not even supposed to watch this today. It comes back. Um, it's on April fourth, Thursday. Um, yep. David and our partner in crime on that show, Adam, aka the Bearded Four Eyes Man, will be looking at Kevin Smith's Cop Out. He didn't write this movie. He directed it. So we'll be doing a little deep dive into the movie Cop Out. On April 4th. Yeah. Um, that's always fun to come in with Adam and mm -hmm. and do. We're not even supposed to watch this today. Yeah. And you guys, that is now airing both on the Faces for Radio channel as well as Turner Fan 77's channel. Just like by the numbers. Just like by the numbers. So um, feel free to to jump in on both channels and hit like. Like if you uh, could do that tonight would be great. Yeah, we appreciate uh, it. And, you know, and again, subscribe if you're not. Um, and, yeah, next week, um, we're I'm going to be a really busy, but we've got yeah. a whole bunch of stuff going on. So, really, Wednesday the 27th is the only day that we can do it. Um, and then I am leaving 28th, uh, to the 28th, to go back up to Northern California for a funeral. Um, and then I will not be coming back until the 2nd of April. So, uh I will try to be online as much as I can, but as I probably, you probably won't see me too much yeah. and I won't be posting a whole lot during that time. So, um, well, I'll wish you guys the best next week, but we'll be here next week for, yeah. Uh, the numbers. For episode 62. Yeah. Uh, of by the numbers. Um, <laughs> if you both don't want to watch, skip it. <laughs> Something else. No, nope. want to watch. We can't skip it. We got to watch we're it. We're not quitters, man. We're we're not quitters. We just we're just procrastinators. Yeah. <laughs> we we just take a long time to get started. And you can ask my. I'm going to start it after we record movie news at five. I'm going to start it tonight and hopefully finish it tomorrow. Yeah. Rob says, "Um, okay, man, thank you, brother. Appreciate that." Um, well, that's it for tonight, man. Oh, oh, you have well, you were going to be on Mega Mike the Movie Man's channel next month. Yeah, but that changed. But since it was on a Friday, you couldn't do it. Yeah. I have now taken your place. Oh, perfect. So so I am going to be on Mega Mike the Movie Man's channel on April 26th for uh Rotten or Not. Um, um was it split the room game? Is what yeah. it is. Um, so <clears throat> So hopefully you guys catch me on there more on this as it develops, as we get closer, yeah. I'll give you the, the dates and the times and all that. But right now it's April 26th, I believe 6 PM Pacific nine Eastern, but hopefully you can catch me on mega Mike, the movie man's channel for that one. We got a good group um, and it's going to be awesome, but yeah, rich couldn't do it. And I couldn't do the one that he wanted to have me on um, because he wanted to do it on a Monday. And since spirits of spirits moved to Monday, I was like, can't. So I just, I just took your place. So I tagged out, man. I tagged out. You tagged in. I hope to represent you. Oh yeah. You'll if it's comedies, you'll do better than I will. Um. Well, yeah, it's basically like I'm supposed to, um, argue whether I'm a movie is good that I think is rotten or a movie is rotten that I think is not rotten or something yeah. like that. Um, it has nothing to do with Rotten Tomatoes. Um, but, uh, it's, it's an interesting game because you, you, the goal of the thing is to convince half the people in the room that you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the more people you have to have equal number of people voting against you than for you. Right. And then you, and you get full points for that. But if you convince too many people, then you're not going to get any points. So, or if you don't convince anybody, um, so it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't quite know how the game is going to work yet, but, um, I'm going to, I'm going to have fun with it. I I've got yeah. some plans. I, I've got some plans well, for movie that I'm, that I'm going to do. Yeah, me too. I'm, 
I'm glad to, to be able to represent Faces for Radio in your place. And um, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I'm looking forward to that. Caveman jumped over on your channel and hey, said, hey, to Huck. Hey, so appreciate that, Caveman. Um, but, yeah, what do you say we get out of here, brother? Let's get out of here, man. Thank you, everyone, good. for being in the chat. Uh, Dell, thank you, brother. I love you, man. Um, as I mean, this is more my wife's family's loss, but still – um, she's the person that I've called mom for the last 25 years. So, uh, yeah. Cause I mean, I, I lost my mother when I was 21 and my stepmother's never been a mother to me, but my wife's mother has been. <laughs> so, um, so to lose her, this is a big loss to the entire family. And, we really appreciate all your all your prayers and well wishes and yeah. condolences um, to your family, man. Make like a tree and beat it. Um, I don't beat a tree, but I beat my knee. If that's I was gonna mo uh, make like wood and beat it, uh, maybe. <laughs> um, but anyway, thank you guys for appreciate watching. it. Thanks. Yeah. Have a great night, you guys. Yeah, this has been this has been great, you guys. Um, take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time on the Faces for Radio podcast. Bye, everybody. See you guys. God bless.